All right. Um, our next speaker is Santanil Jana from the University of British Columbia, and he's going to be speaking about a classified space for community in U3. Go ahead, Santanil. Okay. Uh, so thank you. Thank you very much for inviting me for this talk. Um, so today we'll look at uh, declassifying space for commutativity in U3. So basically you're gonna see how to, how can we compute the integral cohomology of ECOM of U3. So we start with some basic definitions and some results that are very useful in our computation. And uh, then we look for some cohomology computations of some spaces, some interesting spaces. And then we look at the spectral sequence associated to homotopy colimit, which will be our main tool for computing the integral cohomology of ECOM E3. And in the end, we'll, uh, I'll try to give an overview how to, how can we actually go by with the computation. Um, and let's start with the basic definition, which we all have already seen. So for a compact Lie group G, define the space of all commuting uh, tuples to be uh, N tuples such that the pair is commute. And we identify this space with the space of homomorphisms, uh, home uh, Z and G. But, uh, so we, I'll, in this talk, not talk much about this space. Rather, I'll, um, I'll consider this space as simplicial spaces and take the geometric realization um, to form uh, this space BCOM G, which, uh, um, which actually classifies all principal G bundles, uh, like uh, transitionally committed to principal G bundles as um, Zambuki uh, talked about in his in previous, like, previous talk. Um, so these spaces, uh, many people have studied uh, these spaces um, and uh, Alejandro Adem and Jose Manuel Gomez uh, Describe these spaces as homotopy colimit over a poset um, in their paper uh, classifying space for commutativity in a Lie group. Uh, so we'll be using uh, that result in our um, in our computation. So in the first part of the talk, I'll basically be reviewing some of the results that are, are required for that. Uh, so in, so this this slide has already been covered in the in the last lecture. So I'll just quickly skip over it. Uh, basically, it's, this uh, is, is the there is the theorem from Adam and Gomez, which uh, says uh, BCOM G classifies transitionally commutative G bundles. Okay, so to 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 define the uh, homotopy or to describe BCOM G and ECOM G as homotopy limits, uh, we define a topological poset whose objects are closed subspaces which uh, arise from intersection of collection of maximal tori's in G, and we order them by inclusion. Uh, this is a natural uh, subset of this set of all closed subspaces of G, so it, it has a topology. Um, now, uh, in their paper, Adam and Gomez uh, describe this topological poset in terms of disjoint union of G modulo normalizer of some tori, where the disjoint union is taken over uh, a set of equivalence classes. Uh, to see that we to take a root system phi with a set of simple roots delta. And uh, for f for any two subset i and j of the set of simple roots, we say that i and j are equivalent uh, if and only if i is wj for some w in the while group. And this this relation is an equivalence relation. We, we like denote the set of equivalence classes as epsilon uh, sub w. And the following theorem is uh, by again Adam and Gomez. Um, when G is a compact connected Lie group, fix a set of simple roots, then any element S in the topological uh, poset tau G is conjugated to some T sub i for uh, I a subset of delta. Uh, moreover, they write uh, tau of G uh, uh, as, a, as a disjoint union of G mod normalizer of T, T sub I over uh, all the equivalence classes I in epsilon uh, sub W. Um, okay, so this is the main uh, theorem that we'll be using. Uh, so the spaces uh, BCOM G and ECOM G uh, sub one. So sub one means uh, they're 
identity component, it's the uh, connected component of the identity. Um, they are described as a homotopy co-limit over a poset uh, S, Sn, where N is the rank of the Lie group minus the rank of the center. Um, and Sn consists of all non-empty subsets of zero to N, uh, with the order being uh, reverse inclusion. Uh, now uh, they describe P comg and E comg as homotopy co-limit over these uh, F, F and H, where F and H are functors from Sn to top, um, given by the following formula, where S0 to Sk uh, is basically a chain in the topological poset, and the function uh, rho is uh, defined as follows. Uh, we define rho as rank of S minus rank of Z. Um, so rho is between zero, rho is a non-negative uh, number and it's less than N. And also it's strictly increasing uh, and constant on each connected component of tau because um, we have already seen that every element of tau is um, conjugated to some T sub I and, and uh, rho is, uh, constant on each of the connected components for that reason. Um, okay, so uh, uh, these descriptions of F and H, so we'll be mostly working with H, uh, H sub G, because when I compute uh, homotopy, like integral cohomology of ECOM of G. So uh, this description of HG is uh, hard to work with. So, so to describe HG in a much more in, in terms of equivalence classes of chains. So we define uh, two, we take two chains, SI and SI prime in, in uh, the topological poset, uh, says that they satisfy uh, this condition, the, the, the row value of each of the entries are same. Uh, then we define an equivalence relation by setting uh, SI equivalent to SI prime. Uh, if and only if there is a G, such that G uh, normalize the G SI G inverse is uh, SI prime. So, so basically we say SI uh, is conjugated to SI prime. And when saying SI conjugated to SI prime, we mean uh, that every individual uh, entry in the chain is conjugated to the corresponding one. Um, we denote this set of equivalence classes as Sal and I, uh, and we have a continuous map call it mu sub i from g cross g mod s naught to h g of i um, given by this formula. And uh, we can, we assume that ng of si to be uh, the subgroup of g uh, consisting of all g such which normalizes si. Basically, uh, basically we can say that ng of si is the normalizer of si and g. Uh, this, this group NGSI has a, it acts on G um, from the right by its inverse and on G mod S naught it acts by conjugation. And this map that we described mu SI is, uh, is invariant under this diagonal action of, uh, of NGSI on G cross G mod S naught. And uh, if we vary, uh, the SIs through all the equivalence classes in epsilon I get this continuous maps um, and I call it mu I and it turns out that uh, this map is bijective and mu I is also, mu I inverse is also continuous. This gives us the homeomorphism, it gives us a homeomorphism um, of HGI with uh, this joint union of G cross uh, G mod SI naught modulo in G SI where SI is over all the equivalence classes, uh, epsilon I that we described uh, before. So this description of uh, these AGIs are much more uh, tractable and easy to work with. Um, so we're using that. Um, okay, some, uh, some important uh, computations for rank two Lie groups were worked out in detail by uh, Omar, Simon and Bernardo in their paper. Um, there are many, many uh, uh, computations that they did, one of which uh, was the integral cohomology of Bcom of U2 and Ecom of U2, which is uh, given by 
this. Um, in so in this paper, uh, so in this talk, uh, uh, we'll tackle the rank three case, and uh, we choose to work with U three. Um, and the goal is to compute uh, the co integral cohomology of uh, of U three. Now um, we we know for all n uh, bigger than two, uh, there is a homotopy between E comma of U n and E comma of S U n. Uh, however, this is not true in the case for BCOM, as uh, as uh, BCOM U2 and BCOM SU2 are different. Uh, now, in for for rank two cases, we interpret the the homotopy co-limit as a push out diagram, uh, push out square, you can say. Uh, for rank three, um, we uh, consider it as a push out cube. Um, and yeah, this is kind of a general trend. So if you were to compute higher ones, uh, you have to deal with uh, push out n cubes, which uh, which are much more harder than doing push out cubes or squares. Uh, okay. Uh, Santanit, I, I have a question. Yeah, sure. So here, are you taking the push outs in a certain order, like uh, taking these? The push-outs of the faces, or is it like still? You mean the co-limit of this diagram? Yeah, I mean the co-limit of this diagram, not the, so like not individual faces. Or... Okay, so it's not like yeah. a sequence of push-outs. No, no, no. Yeah, it's not a sequence of push-outs. It's like uh, it's still the co-limit of the whole thing. Uh, mm -hmm. You can like uh, represent it in this way. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. So uh, yeah, so we have these these spaces, uh, exactly seven of those, and uh, and uh, the two most interesting spaces that I want to talk about are uh, U three modulo the normalizer, the maximal torus, and U three modulo t cross U two modulo t modulo uh, sigma three. So here sigma three is the is the while group corresponding while group. So which I haven't mentioned, but it's obvious. Um, so a lot is known about the rational cohomology of these spaces. Um, U3 mod NT does not have any non-trivial rational cohomology and the rational cohomology of U3 mod T uh, cross U3 mod T modulo sigma three has been uh, known for a while because it has the same rational cohomology as ECOM of U3. Uh, which was computed uh, by, which was shown by uh, Adem and Gomez in their paper. Um, but uh, we'll try to compute the integral cohomology of these spaces. Um, we'll see how it goes. So we denote uh, U3 mod T, the flag manifold uh, by M, and uh, to compute U3 uh, mod NT, uh, compute this, the, the integral cohomology of those vibrations. We uh, can see, like, consider these two vibrations. Uh, basically, we, we can write down the Cartan Lurie spectral sequence with these sigma threes, uh, but uh, that's uh, like working, like finding group cohomology of sigma three with uh, uh, non trivial coefficient system, systems is not that simple. So we break it up, break it up into two separate computations. So what we did is, so we know that sigma, sigma three can be written as a semi-direct product of A3 and sigma two. We use that fact and we split the vibrations into two separate vibrations where we first uh, mod out by uh, A3 and then, then, then we quotient out by the Z mod two. Uh, and we do it for both the cases and you can write down the uh, cartan lerys spectral sequence for these vibrations. Um, although I use H all the time, um, some of the H means group cohomology, some of the H is mean singular cohomology. Uh, apologize for that. So whenever you see a finite group, basically A3 or Z mod two, it's group cohomology and everyone, everywhere else it's a singular cohomology. Um, okay. Now let's just recall uh, what the cohomology of the flag variety looks like. Um, it's a very standard result, um, which is given by Z x one x two x three, uh, which which we mod out by the 
elementary symmetric polynomials on this variables xi, where uh, each xi has is a degree two. Um, and also, moreover, you can actually explicitly write down the basis, the additive basis in terms of these xi's. Um, so for simplicity, we write this module as A, and we write, it, write the trivial module as Z. Um, so as a A3 module, both A0 and A6 are trivial module, trivial uh, rank one Z, Z module, and uh, the module A uh, is a, so the, so A3 acts on the module A by permuting the uh, X size uh, by sigma, where sigma, we assume sigma to be the three cycle uh, in A3. Right, so using uh, that description, you can compute the group cohomology. So this is standard uh, group cohomology of A3. This is a group cohomology of A3 with uh, coefficients in this uh, module, um, which is given by uh, Z mod three when P is odd and zero when P is even. So it's, uh, it's flipped. Uh, um, and we can write down the spectral sequence. Uh, okay, so we write down, we can write down this first uh, spectral sequence which is this one um, using these uh, group cohomologies. And so we notice that M uh, modulo A3 is a six dimensional orientable closed manifold. Uh, so the top class, top cohomology Z, also, you know that fundamental group is Z mod three. So first homology is also Z mod three. The Poincare duality tells us that uh, H5 of M mod A3 is also Z mod three. Um, now, because of uh, dimension reasons, uh, oh, first of all, there is no even differentials. All the even differentials is zero uh, because uh, M has no cohomology in even dim eight odd dimensions. So the only non possible, only non zero differentials possible are D3 and D5. Uh, and th one of them has to be non zero because if, if not, then uh, we'll have non trivial cohomology in, in dimension and degrees more than six. Uh, okay, so it turns out that uh, D3 is non zero. The reason uh, we'll, we'll look at the reason a little later. But assume that D3 is non-zero and all higher, all higher differentials are zero, uh, we get uh, the cohomology of M mod A3 to be uh, given by this. And uh, now um, here uh, we need to, so for the next step, we need to write down the next spectral sequence. For that, we need to figure out the action of Z mod two on the cohomology of M mod A3. Uh, for that, uh, we see that uh, eight six of m. Uh, yeah, so let me go back to why was eight six of m. So eight six of m. So z mod two acts on this uh, non-trivially because uh, this is the sign module. If you think of it as a sigma three representation. So and uh, eight six of m mod a three. Can think of it as the submodule uh, 3z inside h6 of m. So it still is the sign module. So z mod 3 acts on this by uh, minus one. And uh, z mod 2 acts on h2 of m mod a3 and uh, h5 of m mod a3 uh, by minus one. Again, uh, that you can figure out by looking at the, looking explicitly at the action of uh, by the, by the description of the group cohomology of A3 with uh, coefficients in Z. Um, okay, so because of that, uh, we don't have, with, with these coefficients, uh, the cohomology of Z mod two is zero uh, for all P. And that enables us to write down this spectral, this, uh, the next spectral sequence, uh, the second spectral sequence. Again, um, we know uh, the dimension of M mod uh, sigma three uh, is six. So anything, uh, so we must have D seven uh, non-zero. Otherwise, uh, that's the only differential that's possible, like, like non-zero differential that possible, that's possible. And it has to be non-zero. Um, 
otherwise you'll have contradictions on degree so so then we get the cohomology of u3 mod nt as as z in degree 0 and z mod 2 in degree 2 4 and 6 and the interesting thing to note is uh, usually u3 mod nt uh, usually un mod nt uh, is ex it's expected to have a p torsion for p dividing the order of the while group uh, but in this case uh, although although the order of the while group was 6 we don't see any any three torsion in this uh, in the cohomology uh, that's an interesting fact uh, i don't know why but it happens um okay for for the next uh, one we uh, we want to compute the cohomology of m mod n times m cross m modulo sigma 3 we we'll proceed similarly we have the two uh, spectral sequences um, <clears throat> now in this case um, H12 of the top dimension, so M cross M is 12 dimensional. So H12 of M cross M uh, is, is Z and it's the trivial rank one sigma three representation. So uh, H12 of M cross M cross M modulo sigma three. Uh, okay, so that's a mistake. It's not H12 of M cross M, it's M cross M modulo sigma three is an orientable 12 dimensional manifold. And uh, so if you if we write down the first spectral sequence, which is uh, this one in here, <clears throat> we see again that uh, uh, either the differential D3 or the differential D5 must be zero. Uh, because if not, then again, we have uh, uh, non-trivial non cohomology in degrees higher than 12. Um, now, um, in this case, we see that the differential D3 uh, is non-zero because if we assume D5, if we assume D3 to be zero and D5 to be non-zero, uh, then uh, we see that H4 of M cross M modulo A3 uh, has a Z mod three summand. And so, so does H4 of M cross M modulo sigma three because uh, the action of uh, Z mod two on H two of M cross M modulo sigma uh, A three was by minus one. So the action on H four is by, by one. So it's a trivial, um, it's a trivial module. So we have a Z mod three summand in that case. Now the non-trivial action of Z mod two on H nine uh, of M cross M modulo A three uh, implies that M H nine of M uh, cross M modulo sigma three does not have a Z mod three summand, and that that uh, contradicts the Poincaré duality. Uh, that's uh, that like, because uh, like we must have a Z mod three uh, summand in H nine if there is a Z mod three summand in H four uh, if the manifold is orientable by Poincaré duality. So H5 cannot be non-zero, so H3 has to be zero. So H3 has to be non-zero. Now, uh, <clears throat> we carry out the rest of the steps as before, <clears throat> which I did not describe here, um, to get uh, this uh, description um, of, the, of the integral cohomology of U3 mod T modulo three mod T cross E three mod T modulo sigma three. One thing to point out again is there's no three torsion here. Um, and uh, one the other things to point out, look at the Poincare series, which I should have written down, but uh, if you look closely, you can see the Poincare series matches with the Poincare series for ECOM of uh, U3. Uh, yeah, yeah, ECOM of U3, because uh, they have the same rational cohomology. So, in theory, it should match. Okay, so now um, <clears throat> we look at the formulation uh, for the, the spectral sequence associated to a homotopy co-limit. So, so given a diagram, uh, D from I to top, 
where i is a small category and uh, epsilon star be a homology theory we uh, get a spec there is a spectral sequence uh, converging to uh, the homology and the coma and corresponding to cohomology of the homotopy collimate of the diagram where the e2 page is uh, given by the homology of the uh, of the homology of i uh, with uh, coefficients in uh, in the in the in the homology of b so in this case we'll be using singular homology uh, so when i first saw this object i was really confused what what it was but uh, if you look at it it's uh, it's basically a higher limit functor of the of, of d of limb so we have the ordinary limit we can think of these objects um, as as derived functor of the limit functor we'll see uh, we'll see that so we can um, so to describe what these spaces look this uh, cohomology of this category look like we take a to be an abelian category i to be a small category and f is a functor from i to a um, and we write down the co-simplicial replacement for f uh, given by this where the products of uh, f i is taken over the uh, chains of length length n so at, at the nth state it's over chains of length n so this is a co-simplicial object over a and we take the alternating sum of the co-face and co-face maps we get a co-chain complex over a <clears throat> and we define the uh, uh, the cohomology of the small category to be the pth cohomology of this co-chain complex so yeah so this in some sense it's it's a, it's a higher limit functor and sometimes it's also written as uh, limb p of f where it's understood that f is a functor from i to a okay so in our case um okay so here the co-face maps d uh, dj they're defined in much more generality but uh, we'll just take a look at it how it's defined in our case <clears throat> which, which is basically a restriction of the general case so in our case i is uh, s2 where s2 is the <clears throat> poset with um poset of all subsets of 0 1 2 the set 0 1 2 and f is the singular cohomology of the functor h Oh, and we can write down the co-simplicial replacement. Now we don't have any chains in our poset that are longer than length three, uh, sorry, length two. The, uh, so we don't have any terms after that. Uh, and the projection map of the co-face map dj onto the factor uh, h onto the factor hk of hi1 uh, is in which is indexed by this i0 to i1 is a composition of the projection from the product with the identity map when when j is not um, n so if we think of in the general setting uh, when j is not n uh, it's the identity map from the fact on the from the same factor uh, indexed by uh, so if if let's say if the chain has length length n <clears throat> and um, the, if the chain has length n and we are talking about uh, the the jet uh, co-face map then uh, we we omit we take the identity map from the factor of length n minus uh, of the same factor indexed by something which is just length n minus one and we we omit the jet jet entry uh, and for j equals n uh, we take the induced map from hk of hi0 to hk of hi1 so in that case uh, for n it will be hk of uh, hin minus 1 to hk of hin so so this, that's how we <coughs> these maps are defined now uh, once we okay once we know the uh, the cochain complex uh, we can 
find out the the homology like the, the cohomology of of uh, the uh, the small categories by looking at the kernel and images um, so before doing that we see a result that's useful uh, so in our case we only have to care about limb one and limb two there's, there's nothing uh, about that it's all zero and also we have the added bonus that limb two is also uh, zero in our case now uh, we can show that by showing this map which is the cochain this this map <clears throat> is uh, is subjective now um, as you can see this I have written only 0, 1, 2 here because it's obvious that if we have a chain of length 2, then the last one is always uh, the whole set. Um, and we can just pick an element and pick, uh, we can choose an arbitrary element and pick an element B from there, from, from here, which uh, maps onto uh, our element. Uh, and the key thing that we use is, uh, h of 0 2 and h of 0 1 2 are same uh, space are the same space in, in our uh, in our construction <clears throat> okay so once um, we have <clears throat> sorry so once we have uh, we have this uh, uh, Coach and complex, we can uh, we can uh, write down we can write down the map we can write down the uh, whole coach and complex and compute the cohomology and uh, write down the higher limits using integral coefficients, but uh, that uh, that is much more complicated because uh, with integral coefficients uh, the spaces we consider has uh, torsion and uh, that makes things complicated so instead we work with mod 2 and mod 3 coefficients um, <clears throat> because of uh, because it's it's possible to uh, get the integral cohomology from the mod 2 and mod 3 cohomology uh, because uh, ecom of u3 does not have any torsion other than two or three i will see uh, why that's uh, why that's the case, uh, but first of all, if we do the computation for with uh, mod three cohomology, we see that uh, e com of u three with mod three cohomology is same as the cohomology of u three mod t cross u three mod t modulo sigma three, and uh, this this is this uh, basically means that uh, the cohomology the integral cohomology of e com of three does not have any three torsion because e com of u3, the, the rational cohomology of e com of 3 and the rational cohomology of uh, u3 mod t cross u3 mod t mod sigma 3 is the same. Um, and also mod 3, they have the same cohomology. That means integral cohomology does not have uh, any three torsion. With uh, the mod 2 coefficients, we, uh, cal we can calculate the, the, the limb 0 and limb 1. Uh, by looking at the the coface maps, and uh, there are only finitely many non-zero terms. Uh, yeah, one reason to consider. So previously, uh, people have tried to compute Bcom, uh, and then from there they deduced uh, deduced that as a corollary they get Ecom uh, for free. But uh, a Bcom is is an infinite dimensional complex and the, the all the spaces involved in the homotopy co-limit are also in, some of them are also infinite dimensional. So we, we try to do a finite version of that. So ECOM is is finite dimensional and all the spaces that are involved are also finite dimensional. So up to some uh, some lower uh, low dimension for some low dimensional Lie group you can just uh, see what's going on and, and try to uh, try to compute it by hand. Uh, so if we compute all the limits, which, which are finitely many ones, 
<clears throat> we see that we only have in the in the E2 page, you only have column zero and column one. There are no non-trivial differentials and uh, get the following uh, cohomology for ECOM of U3 um, with, uh, with uh, mod two coefficients. Now, I, as I said before, it's enough for, for, uh, for to compute the integral cohomology because you already, uh, we already know the, the rational uh, cohomology of ECOM. And uh, we also uh, will see the fact that it cannot have any other torsion. To see that it cannot have any other torsion, we take a look, quick look at two, two lemmas that are needed to prove that. Uh, we fix a compact connected D group and we take the T to be a maximal torus, um, W to be the wild group of um, wild group of a, for T. Uh, we take F um, to be a field such that uh, characteristic of F and the order of the wild group is a co-prime. Then we have the same isomorphisms as, as in the rational case. So this is kind of a general result, uh, uh, just a kind of a generalization of the rational result. So the proof goes at exactly the same way as the rational one. Um, so we take a story. So the natural action of NT on G cross T power N that induces this subjective map phi N whose uh, fibers are trivial, have trivial cohomology with their coefficients. So that introduces in this isomorphism uh, in cohomology and this collection phi n that defines a simplicial map so that we get a continuous map, uh, the geometric realization, uh, which induces the required isomorphism in cohomology. And the proof for uh, ECOM is, is the same. Uh, it goes the same as proof of ECOM. Uh, Okay, the second lemma that we require is uh, just we have the same setting, <clears throat> then uh, the cohomology of G mod T cross PT modulo W and G mod T cross G mod T modulo W have, can only have uh, P torsion for those P dividing the order of the while group. And uh, so the proof uh, again is a very standard uh, transfer argument. So we consider the covering space, uh, uh, with, the, with the transfer homomorphism uh, taken in the field uh, ZQ, where ZQ is Z localized at Q, uh, where with uh, GCD of Q and the order of the while group uh, to be one. So we want Q to be co prime to uh, the order of the while group. Now, uh, the composition we know from covering space theory is this multiplication by the number of sheets of the covering space. In this case, it's the order of the wild group. And, uh, and this map is an isomorphism because uh, uh, order of the wild group is, is, uh, is invertible in, in ZQ. Um, so therefore pi star is, is, uh, is injective. And now we know that uh, the cohomology of G mod T cross PT is free, distortion free. So uh, for, Pi, pi star to be injective, it must be that uh, eight star of G mod T cross uh, BT modulo W has no, no Q torsion. So whenever Q is relatively prime to the order of the while group, uh, we, we, don't have, we don't have Q torsion in these, in these spaces. So it can only have those P torsions for P dividing the order of the while group. And again, the argument for G mod T cross G mod T modulo sigma is, uh, Modulo W is exactly the same. Okay, so that gives us this basic, uh, this uh, general result that Bcom G uh, and Ecom G can only have P torsion for those P dividing the order of the wild group. Uh, so just a direct consequence of the previous two lemmas. And the, as a corollary, we get that Ecom of U3 has only two or three torsion. Now the Poincaré uh, series for uh, ECOM of U3 has been computed uh, in much more generality. Actually, ECOM of uh, G, the, co the cohomology of ECOM of G was computed um, in the paper by Adem and Gomez. So you can get the, the Poincaré series for ECOM of 
u3 which is uh, given by this and uh, we can uh, compare this Poincare series with the, with the cohomology of e com of u3 with uh, with uh, z mod 2 coefficients uh, and use the universal coefficient theorem to uh, write down the integral cohomology which uh, which is given by this um, uh, yeah, and uh, so one important or important observation, I think, is the integral cohomology of ECOM. So you have the integral cohomology of ECOM of U3 subjects onto the integral cohomology uh, of ECOM of U2. Um, so yeah, uh, so that's an observation. Uh, for now, um, now we have this uh, fiber sequence uh, involving e com of u3 to b com of u3 to b u3, the standard one. Uh, and we can write down uh, this mod 2 uh, spectral series spectral sequence. Um, as we already know, e com of u3 and b u3. Now, uh, the, so the problem is the differentials in that spectral sequence. So we can deduce that D2 from E205 to E2, 2 comma 4. Um, we just have to imagine where they are. I didn't draw the spectral sequence. Uh, they are non, uh, this differential D2 is non-zero. Um, and this can be seen by comparing it with the with this spectral sequence with the similar vibration for E2. Uh, but there are, there are other, uh, possible non-zero differentials that uh, don't know about uh, whether they are non-zero or not. So in general, uh, the only thing we can say about B com of U3 is that uh, does, it, does, it does not have any three torsion because uh, E com of U3 does not have any three torsion, but uh, it definitely has some two torsion and um, that's non-trivial. Uh, and it's uh, the, you need to understand the spectral sequence in a much more uh, much in a much better way to deduce what those two torsions are, and uh, and we when we computed e comma u three we got e comma base u three for free, uh, but uh, b comma base u three is a little uh, different. So in the in the corresponding spectral sequence, we write that down. We see that in this case uh, d2 is zero, and uh, but there are some possible higher differentials, but uh, I expect them all to be zero and um, b comma su3 and bsu3 cross e comma su3 to have the same cohomology as it was in the case for su2. Uh, but I don't have a proof that all higher differentials are zero yet. So yeah, that's still that's still a question to be answered. Um, okay. Uh, thank you very much for listening. And do you have any questions? Okay. Let's thanks, Antonio. That is, yeah. Thanks a lot for that talk. I was very interested in this computation. Um, yeah. So any... most of it, uh, most of it was um, computational. So apologies for that. Yeah, like I could not include everything. Um, there are lots of lots of steps that's missing yeah. from here, uh, but uh, oh, that was a good computations over. too. Uh, yeah. Um, are there any questions for Santanil? Well, well, I don't have a question, but I just have a comment. Um, and my comment is that uh, I'm actually quite surprised that he that Santanil can uh, pull this off. I mean, you know. <laughs> Is is it, it really is impressive? I mean, yeah, yeah. Um, you, you might have to thank uh, Alejandro for that. He, he insisted me to do this computation. Okay, well, you know. Uh, so I, I guess uh, my comment is that I just wanted to congratulate you because because this is uh, a lot of hard work, hard work and um, the, especially the case of GMRMT, I think is quite quite interesting. Uh, yeah, um, so right now, uh, the question that, uh, okay, this is a sidetrack, uh, obviously. Uh, the question that I'm currently looking at is, uh, 
the generalized uh, computation for uh, un mod nt for any n uh, mm -hmm. which is not known for integral cohomology so there are some interesting methods that so there are some approaches that you can uh, take for that um, so i feel like if we if you want to like improve our results of about bcom and ecom from low dimensional Lie groups to a like, general un and say something about them seems pretty hard uh, but we first need to know about these uh, yeah. these quotients like these uh, un right. entities yeah and, and from from your solution you can see that uh, a lot of representation theory and group cohomology of the symmetric group is coming up and that yeah. makes it really complicated so yeah. but on the other hand anything that you can i mean i i looked at this at some point and not much is known so anything you could say i think is would be an improvement yeah right. yeah i think so yeah right. in any case i just wanted to congratulate you that, that basically thank you the thank point. you Other comments or questions? I have a question. Do you do you have any products in Ecom U three? So uh, yeah, I did not talk about the group, uh, the cohomology ring, because I thought I would not have time. Uh, usually, uh, yes and no uh, at the same time. So it, with the mod two uh, classes, they don't have any non-trivial product. But uh, for the rational, the, the the restriction of the rational classes. Uh, and the integral ones, they, they have some non-trivial products that comes directly from the rational cohomology. Oh, I see. Okay. Yeah. Just from a quick look, uh, the only possibility I can find is in degree four yeah, that, degree that, six. Yeah, that doesn't happen because yeah, the the degree uh, six mod two class is is the same as the one for U two, uh, so it's kind of a so yeah so so this is the interesting part. Uh, so the that I was referring to, so the cohomology of E comma U three, that subjects to the cohomology of E comma U two. Mm -hmm. uh, how and, do you uh, how do you do that? Um, Yeah, I don't uh, remember on top of my head how to see that. Um, yeah, to look at the homotopy uh, co-limit uh, formulation for that. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. Right, yeah. What was the last question, Bernardo, that you had? How do you, how how do you see the surjectivity into uh, ECOM into, into, into ECOM U2? I think that the ECOM U, the stable one, that subjects onto ECOM U2 and it factors through this one. So, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah that's yeah, a, I, yeah, I think, okay. I think yeah, he, right. you told me, Simon told me about this uh, yeah. uh, before. Right, right, yeah. I'm surprised there was no three torsion. I would have really guessed that it had all the possible. Um, are there any uh, further questions for Santanil? I mean, I have more questions, but maybe we can wait, wait for the, for the discussion. discussion. I don't know. Uh, yeah, that, that, that would work. We can wrap it up now and then nice eight minute break before the discussion. Sure. Okay. Well, uh, then thank you, Santanil, for that talk. Yeah. So I might have to leave early from the discussions because uh, I've got to go rush to UBC now. Um, oh, okay. <laughs> if, you have a, if you have a question, then probably you can ask now. Ah, okay, that, that's a good point. Yeah. Um, 
All right, but maybe I'll stop the recording to give people a chance to talk more often. Yeah. Bernardo can start the discussion early. Mm -hmm.